Hello guys and welcome to our video number 3 in our Pi Game RPG series. In this video we're going to be adding in the player collision detection between the ground, ground and the player. Okay, This is going to be a pretty important video. Okay, This is about Rex, about how Pi Game actually detects collisions. So this is a pretty cool video and I advise you to watch carefully. So yeah, let's begin and let's open up our game file first. And just as a quick review, let's run our code and see what we did last time. Okay, here we go. Here's our player who is moving. Well, basically, there are several things that we need to be doing now, okay? We need to be implementing gravity. And because I need to implement gravity, I need to implement a detection system between the ground and the player, okay? Because, let me just show you. Gravity, implementing gravity is just going to take one line. Now, one line, yep, it just takes one line. And why is that? Because we already implemented it. We implemented the entire system. We implemented acceleration. We implemented velocity, friction. Now we just need to do one change, just two keys. That's it. What I just did now is implement gravity. I basically implemented a constant force, which is 0 0.5, exerting downwards. There's now a permanent force on the player of, of magnitude 0 0.5, which is always on the player. And that's what gravity is. Gravity is a force that's always pulling you downwards. So what I just did over here is a permanent force which is basically moving the player down. Pretty cool, right? So this is why I was actually going for the entire acceleration system, in case you were wondering. So let's just run, the, uh, I pressed the wrong key over there, hold on. Let's do this at the end. Okay, now there's a the problem. The player just fell off the screen. Because it's like uh, someone just removed the earth underneath your feet. You just fell, you, you just fell down. So that's why we need to implement collision de detection, okay? Which is what we're going to be doing. The first thing I want to do is introduce you to the concept of rects. I'm going to open up the ground.py file as well in front of us. Okay, so now we have all three files open. Great. The first I want to go to the player. Now, what is a rect? Basically, let me just write the code first and then I'll explain it to you. self.image.getrect. Okay, uh, this actually sounds kind of funny if I think about it, but okay. So what I just did over here is I obtained a rectangle. That's what rect stands for. It stands for rectangle. I obtained a rectangle from our image, the image that we loaded. Now, what does this do and why do we do it? Okay, now, do you have any idea how Pygame detects collision? Or actually, forget about that. I'm not talking about just Pygame. I'm talking about any game uh, software, any ga game library, game framework. What happens is that they, in very simple terms, what they do is sort of draw a boundary around an object. Okay, like imagine you're you. Okay, imagine yourself. What actually happens is that they sort of draw a rectangle around you. Okay, and since this is 2D, okay, this is a rectangle. Otherwise, it would be something else like a cuboid or something. But yeah, in our case, we're doing 2D. So they draw a rectangle around you, and that rectangle defines the area which you are in. It's like a container. Okay, it's a container that basically surrounds you, and they use these containers to sort of define it. Like, okay, this object is within this boundary. Okay, and that's a rectangle. It's not very accurate actually, because if you have something circle like a ball, uh, it's not very accurate. Uh, but that's just a limitation in Pi game. Okay, in other systems we have more refined techniques. Anyways, now if you want to learn more about rects, how to create them, how to manage them please go check out my other video in the d d description below. Okay, it's a full video just on rects and collision detection. I think I actually have two videos, actually, one for rects and one for collision detection. I'll include everything in the description below, okay? So for now, so we should get, you should actually get going. This is getting too long. So what I did here with get rect is that I obtained the rect from this image. This is basically a, a handy technique. I don't have to sit down and actually check, okay, this, the... Uh, the image is this big, okay? It's like 50 pixels or 60 pixels in height, blah, blah. I don't have to do that. I don't have to manually create the rect, which we normally have to do, because the rect contains four things, okay? The x position, the y position of the top left corner, and the width and the height. And it can actually use this to basically draw the entire rectangle. Because think about it. If you add width into that top left corner, you get, that, you get the other corner, right? If the, if, you, in, if the top left corner, if you plus the width of the player into it, you get the top right corner. 
Now just, just think about that for a moment and see how it goes and you know try to visualize it. At any rate, what I do with get rect here is sort of obtain the size of the image. So I don't need to worry about how big the image really is, okay? I, I basically just obtained a rect object of that size. So yeah, that's easy for us. So what, what I'm gonna do here is go to ground as well and do the same thing. Self dot image dot get rect. Great. Okay, so now what? Well, we need to set up collision detection, and before we do that, we need to set up something called sprite groups. Okay, this is a useful technique for grouping that makes collision de detection a lot easier. Okay, now let me try to remember how to do it. So basically, I want to create a group for all our ground objects. Okay, right now we only have one, but later on we might be adding more. So yeah, this is good practice. Um, let's call this ground group. pygame dot sprite dot group okay this is how you declare any group and then what I'm gonna do is ground group dot add ground there you go now let's go and set up that collision detection function in the player okay I'm gonna come over here and set up a new function called what's it gonna be called um, collision check how's that collision Now here's some, some complex code, okay? Hits is equal to uh, pygame dot sprite dot sprite collide, okay? And we want to, the sprite collide function takes three parameters, okay? Three main parameters. The first one is gonna be the player, I believe. So write self in there. And the second one is the group. Okay, so this is gonna be a bit weird. So we need to actually uh, pass in that group, okay, because we can't access it in here because it's not in the same file. So what I'm gonna do is basically have it passed into the collision function. So should we just call this group, okay, over there. And I'll write group over here, okay. So basically it's gonna check for collisions between the player and the group, okay, the ground group, which we're gonna pass into this function. Okay, so uh, what else is there? The third parameter, right. False. What is this? Well, basically, sprite collide is a function that can also delete colliding objects. Like if two objects are, are colliding and you want to delete them, you can pass true over here. But I don't want to delete them, so I'm going to pass false. Okay? Next up. If self.vel is greater than y, okay? Meaning if the velocity of the player is greater than, than y, sorry, zero, if it's greater than zero in the y direction, so basically, uh, this will only trigger if the player is not already standing on the ground. Because if he's standing on the ground, then his velocity should be zero, right? Because he should be standing still. Okay? So if he's this will only activate if, if he's falling. Because while he's falling, it will then check to see, is he colliding with the ground? So yeah, that's basically how this works. And once the collision is detected, we're going to stop the player. We're going to stop him from moving. That's basically how the gravity in the ground works, right? So yeah, if hits, meaning if a hit was found, otherwise don't bother running this, uh, then lowest is equal to hits zero. Now what this does is that hits is actually uh, a list, okay? Uh, there's a possibility that the object that you're comparing with, you know, the object that you're checking for collisions against this group, it's possible that the object is uh, colliding against three or four. If it's possible that's colliding against more than just one. So that's why we actually have this function, okay? It's actually it's able to detect collisions with any number of uh, objects. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna say, just give me the first one. And the first one is always the closest one, okay? The one that's closest to you. This list is kinda like sorted, okay? So I'm gonna say, just give me the, the first one, okay? So yeah. And then I'm gonna set up a condition. If, if um, this is a bit complicated, let me think about this. If self dot rect dot bottom is greater than or equal to lowest dot. Okay, and by the way, whenever I refer to lowest over here, basically this is that ground object. Okay, this is the ground. Just remember that. So lowest dot rect dot top. 
So if the bottom of our player is below the top of the ground, then I want you to execute this code because that means the player is basically falling down, okay? Because uh, I want to stop him from basically going through the ground. So set the velocity to zero, the y velocity, and set the position of the player back to the top if he has fallen down, maybe, maybe a few pixels. Okay, so I want you to set that to the lowest. Okay, this is actually a bit complicated. Uh, Self.pause.x is equal to lowest.rect.top minus self.rect.height, okay, plus one. Now, ignore the plus one for a second and just uh, pretend like uh, I didn't include that. I'll explain that in, in a minute. And let me just do this for the rect as well, okay? Uh, rect.x, okay, is equal to that, is equal to that. Okay, sorry, this is actually y, okay, sorry. Because uh, basically we're only adjusting the y position here, okay, not the x. So basically what I did here, and just ignore these plus ones for now, I'll just remove them. Basically what I'm doing here is that if the position of the, if the bottom of the player is, is below the, the top of the rectangle, what I'm doing is that the, setting the position of the player to the top of the rectangle minus the height. Why am I doing that? It's because I don't want to set the top of the player to the top of the rectangle. The, to the top of the uh, ground object. I want to set it above the, uh, the ground. I want to set it above the ground and by how much? By the height. So I'm just going to minus the height from the ground, from the top of the ground, and that will basically give me the position uh, above the ground from which I should start drawing. Okay, I know this is a bit complicated, just think about it. Basically what this is doing is giving me a position uh, above the ground. Okay, this is uh, going to give me a position from where I can start drawing the player so that the bottom of the player is going to be touching the ground, like that, all right? So yeah, and we're almost done here, but there's only one or two more things that we need to do because as you can see here is that uh, when I move the player over here, I only move, move the position, okay? I didn't actually move the rect anywhere. That's actually where I need to go and adjust the rect position of the player. So self.rect.top left is equal to self.pause, okay? Because remember, the rect starts being drawn from the top left, okay? I can't directly assign these because a rect object is not the same thing as a, as a vector2 object, okay? It actually contains a, a different set of values in a different format, so I need to do top left, okay? Which actually does take a, a vector2 object, okay? So, yeah. I know this is complicated, I hope you understood that, but uh, let's move on to the ground object now, okay? And here I need to actually set the position of the ground. I need to set the position of the ground. How do I do that? Hmm. I have set the ground here. Like I've set the position over here. But that's not enough. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm actually referring to is setting the position of the rectangle. Because remember, the image and the rectangle are actually two separate objects, okay? So I need to sort of have the position and the image, sorry, the rect and the image be synchronized with each other, okay? Otherwise, we'll end up with something where the rectangle is somewhere else and the image is somewhere else. So basically, what we're seeing and what's actually happening behind the screen is, is going to be different. So how do I do that? Well, I'm just going to go here and do self.rect.topLeft is equal to self.pause. Easy peasy. And I think I need to do the same in the player as well. Self dot rect dot top left is equal to self dot pause. Great. Now hopefully everything went well and it's gonna run perfectly. I hope so. Okay, now. What's going on over here? Let's see. Okay, okay. so it looks like the problem was something a, bit, a little silly and something that I actually forgot to add. You see, it's this line over here. This line basically calls the init function of its parent class, pygame.sprite.sprite, okay? Uh, so this line over here basically calls the init function, which was basically unnecessary. The error that we were getting was something because the variables weren't being initialized or something along those lines, okay? 
It's kind of ironic because I never actually figured out why I used to add this before. Uh, so I just realized why. Well, I learned something new today. So let's do that and now run this. So basically, whatever, wherever you actually... Did I save it? No, I didn't save it. OK, so wherever you use pygame.sprite.sprite, .sprite, make sure to include this line. OK, he still falls down. Why is that? Well, that's actually pretty obvious if you think about it. We never actually called the gravity function. So where should I add it? Let's just put it over here, player.gravitycheck. Uh, sorry, it's called collision, right? I used to call it a gravity check first. It's now collision. And I'm going to pass in the ground group, OK? Because that's a parameter. And now let's run this function and pray. OK, whoa. I'm actually surprised that it worked out. And by the way, it might be lagging a bit over here in the video because of the screen recorder. Uh, but it should be perfectly fine when you're doing it, OK? So yeah, things are going pretty good. And once we add the jump mechanic in the next video, you'll realize just how amazing this uh, ground detection ability actually is. So yeah, I'm pretty good for this video. I think that you know we did this pretty well. I hope you understood everything. I know it's tough. I know it's hard to understand. I had to rewatch this myself like three times. The first time I was actually learning about reacts and everything, I didn't even under understand most of it in the first video that I watched. I had to like go through documentation. I had to make several projects myself before I fully understood how everything worked. So it's natural to not, not understand everything at first, don't worry. And just try to follow along, try to understand what's going on, try to just understand the flow, okay? And one day when you're making your own projects, you'll fully understand how everything works. So if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more of this content because which is coming out, okay, then make sure to subscribe because we'll, we'll be releasing this content on a fixed schedule. So yeah. Leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in a later video, hopefully. Later.